One of the most common Wi-Fi problems that we continue to see in the field today is when the network has not been configured to support the least capable device. Okay, so in this video, we're, we're specifically referring to the relationship between access point placement and transmit power. Okay, we call this type of problem the near-far effect. Now, before we jump in and I explain how that works, we need to make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to what transmit power means. So transmit power is how far can an access point or client device, be it a laptop, tablet, smartphone, etc., transmit an RF signal. All right, now we typically measure this in milliwatts or decibel milliwatts, also known as dBm. For the sake of this video, we're going to use milliwatts. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let me explain how the near-far effect works, why it's ruining your Wi-Fi performance, and most importantly, what you can do to fix it. Okay, so if you're ready, let's jump over the whiteboard and get started. To help visualize and show you how the near-far effect works, I've set up a football field. All right, so we have our access point. That's down here at end zone A. And we have our client device, which in this case we're gonna say is a smartphone down at end zone B. Okay, now let's assume that the access point is using a 100 milliwatt transmitter, which means it has a transmit power capability to send a signal all the way down the entire length of the field to end zone B. All right, now on the same token, the client device has a 30 milliwatt transmit power capability, which means it can send a signal to about there, right? Right around the 30 yard line. Now, obviously you can see that there's an issue, all right? So what this is representing is that the client device or the smartphone, it can hear the access point just fine. That signal makes it all the way down there. However, the access point cannot hear the client device, okay? Now I do wanna point out that 100 milliwatts, 30 milliwatts, that doesn't actually really mean or, or translate over to yards, okay? So I'm just using those numbers for the sake of the example, okay? Now, this mismatch creates, a, creates several issues, okay? Several issues. Obviously, we first off, we can see that there's a large gap here of about 70 yards right where again client device can hear the access point but the access point cannot hear the client device right this causes several issues number one okay the client device can't connect all right or if it can it's low quality right or low quality all right number two it doesn't just stop there with the client device. It's going to continue to resend that data packet to try and connect to the access point over and over again. What does that do? Okay. That ties up airtime, right? So in terms of this spectrum, all the other devices that are in this spectrum trying to access that access point in the area Right, are also gonna be affected by this resending of data packets, right? So it's gonna slow things down for everybody, all right? And number three, okay, it's gonna cost money slash time to try and solve this problem. They're gonna either have to take time away from other projects to fix this, or they're gonna to have to hire a professional service provider to come in to solve the configuration issue, okay? So this is what we call the near far effect. All right, so how do we solve this scenario? All right, well, let's take a look here. Let's basically start over, all right? Now, in the ideal scenario, if we have our client device that's down here, right, and our access point that used to be down here, here's what we're gonna wanna do. Okay, we're gonna wanna put an access point here and an access point at the other 30 yard line, okay? Now, what does this mean? 
You're thinking to yourself, okay, that makes sense. This access point here, all right, we're going to set their transmit capability powers to closely match that of the client device, okay? So if it was 30 milliwatts on the client device, we're gonna set it closely to 30 milliwatts here. You might have a little buffer over a little bit, but in this case, we're gonna say 30, which means that using an omnidirectional antenna, it can send a signal in both directions, right? 30 yards in both directions. Same thing with this access point, okay? It will be able to send or transmit, right? In both directions, okay? So what does this do for us? Essentially, each access point can cover 60 yards, okay? And I know what you're thinking. Well, yeah, there's some overlap. Well, we want about 20 to 25% overlap with a proper design in this scenario to properly facilitate things like roaming, wireless VoIP or Wi-Fi calling. Okay, it's the optimal uh, configuration for the performance that we want to get. Okay, and this is how you would correctly design for the near far effect to fix that situation to properly support that client device. Now that we've had a chance to see the near far effect in action, it's clear that your network configuration plays a huge, huge role in the overall quality of your network. The trouble is getting it right is both an art and a science. Okay, so you need to have the proper certifications in the products and services that are being delivered, right? And you have to have the art form of it, which is the experience to understand how to make it all come together correctly. So that's why if you don't have the the proper in-house technical resources, or you don't have the time to allocate your resources to troubleshooting or managing these types of issues or managing the network, when in reality, you're really trying to focus on managing the, the experience of the network, it's important to partner with a professional service provider who can support your business and its initiatives when it comes to the network. So that's it, everybody. I hope you liked this video. More importantly, I hope you got something out of it. We have a lot more whiteboard videos coming up soon, so stay tuned and we'll see you next time.